Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at EMF and internal resistance. So let's get started. Now, EMF stands for electromotive force, and we're going to look at internal resistance as well. And this first section introduces a lot of new terms to you, ones that you won't have seen before in National Phi Physics. So we look at EMF, internal resistance, terminal potential difference, and lost volts. And there's also a few other new terms as well. So the first thing to look at is what is meant by an electrical source. And it says here that electrical sources are devices that supply electrical energy, for example chemical cells, solar cells, thermocouples, dynamos and power supplies. In this section, however, we will mainly look at the power supply as being the source. So forget about all the other ones just now, we're going to focus on the power supply as being the source. In other words, a battery or a cell. And we then have the definition of electromotive force, which says that the electromotive force, EMF, which is given the symbol capital E, of a source is the energy supplied to each coulomb of charge which passes through the source. It is measured in volts V. Now, you should recognize this because this is identical to the definition for potential difference or voltage, which you saw at National 5 level. And the reason it's identical is because electromotive force is also a voltage. It then says, to introduce some new terms, consider the following circuit with a battery, voltmeter, load resistor R, and switch S. So here we've got a battery with two cells, we've got a switch S with some wires, and we've got a voltmeter in parallel with our battery, and then a resistor here. And it says that when the switch is open, we have what is called an open circuit. So in this current state just now, when the switch is open, we say that this is an open circuit. And in this open circuit, no current is flowing because the switch is open. In this case, the reading on the voltmeter gives the EMF, which is 1.5 volts. So when the switch is open and we simply have the voltmeter connected in parallel with the battery to get the voltage across it, the voltmeter is going to give us the EMF of the battery. So another way of thinking about it is when no current is flowing in our circuit, if we were to measure the voltage across the battery at that time, what we get is the EMF. However, when the switch is closed, current will flow around the circuit. Since all materials have some resistance, the power supply must have its own resistance. In other words, the battery here will have its own resistance. This is called the internal resistance, which we give the symbol small r. And it's internal because it's internal to the battery or the power supply. This means we can model a power supply as a source of electrical energy, i.e. a battery, in series with a small internal resistance, as shown below. And when we get this kind of setup, we call it a real source. So when we've got a battery or cell with EMF E next to a small resistor of resistance lowercase r, that is our internal resistance, and then we enclose these components in a dashed line box. And this is what we call a real source. An ideal source, however, is a source with no internal resistance, i.e. it only has an EMF. So it's almost like saying an ideal source is ideal because you don't have to think about an internal resistance. But in reality, a real source like a battery will have an internal resistance. And this is something that you would have ignored at National 5 level and in higher physics up until this point. Now, just to help you visualize this idea of opening and closing the switch and how we get an EMF, I'm going to show you a quick simulation. Now, imagine we've got a voltmeter connected in parallel to a DC power supply, just like a battery. You'll notice that the voltmeter says I've got zero volts, and that's because my output voltage is zero on the DC power supply. If I change this to two, however, you'll see my voltmeter jumps up to two volts. If I increase to four volts, the voltmeter jumps up to four, and so on you see that what we actually measure is the EMF. So this battery, when it's on its own and not connected into a circuit, will give you the EMF on a voltmeter. And this is almost like its overall maximum voltage that the battery has. However, if we then connect this battery and the voltmeter in with some more wires, with a variable resistor and an ammeter, so that this is in a series circuit with some current flowing around the circuit, then what we would actually see is if I increase the DC power supply this time, on the voltmeter, we can see two is giving out two, but if I go to four, we can see that the we can see the voltmeter reading is just below four this time. And if I go to six, we can see we get a voltage just below six. And then eight, we're just below eight. And for ten, again, we're below ten volts there. And that's because when a current flows in the circuit, when we measure the voltage across the battery, we're no longer going to get the EMF. What we actually are measuring at this point is something called the terminal potential difference. And this is the potential difference or voltage that is available to the rest of the circuit to be used up by the components. So we can see that for the 10 volt case, for example, we're at something like 9.7, 9.8 volts there. And that means there has been a small amount of voltage lost. And that is what we call the lost volts. 
So this voltage is lost because energy is wasted by the current trying to pass through the battery. And that's because, remember, the battery has an internal resistance. And so energy is converted into heat when electrons try to pass through the internal resistance, the small resistor of the battery. Going back to the notes now, we can look at the lost volts and terminal potential difference in a bit more detail. So it says that when current is drawn from an electrical source, some energy is wasted inside the source due to its internal resistance, as we just said earlier. This is referred to as the lost volts, and we can label this as capital V subscript lost, just to keep us right. So we've actually got an expression for the lost volts in terms of the current in the circuit and the internal resistance small r. So we say that V lost is equal to IR, and notice that this is just a form of Ohm's law, V equals IR, but we're using V lost and small r instead. It then says this means that there is less voltage available to the load resistor R. So remember in our circuit diagram, this was the load resistor, also known as an external resistance. The voltage available at the terminals of the electrical source, and therefore across the load resistor, is called the terminal potential difference, TPD, or we can call this capital V with a subscript TPD for terminal potential difference. And this is sort of like the voltage that is left over and is available to the rest of the circuit once a small amount of the voltage has been lost. So we can also use V equals IR to calculate the terminal potential difference, and it's actually just the normal V equals IR, where we have the voltage equals the current times the resistance of the resistor in the circuit. And this is the external resistor, not the internal resistor. By conservation of energy, we can then say that the electromotive force, or EMF E, is equal to the terminal potential difference plus the lost volts. So let's say, for example, the EMF E was 1.5 volts, and the lost volts was 0.3 volts, then that would leave 1.2 volts as my terminal potential difference, which is the voltage available to the rest of the circuit. And remember the EMFE is almost like the overall voltage that the battery can have when it's not plugged into our circuit. So because we've got this conservation of energy or voltage here, we can say that the EMFE is equal to capital V plus I small r. So E equals V plus IR, and this just comes from the definitions and the expressions that we've shown up here. So we're just rewriting VTPD as capital V instead, and we've also got the V lost, which we're rewriting as the current times the internal resistance. So we've got E equals V plus IR, where E is the electromotive force measured in volts V, V is terminal potential difference measured in volts V, I is the current measured in amperes, and small r is the internal resistance measured in ohms. It then says to note that when you're asked to find the current in the circuit, it can help to rewrite the above equation as E equals IR plus IR. So we can actually expand the capital V term for Ohm's law into the current times the resistance of the external resistor. And what we can then do is if we're trying to find the current, we can factorize it to get E equals I times R plus R. So we can actually introduce brackets here and take the current outside the brackets. And this means that we can plug in all the other numbers for E, big R and small r, and then just find what the current is. It also says to note that external resistance is another name for the total resistance in the circuit excluding the power supply. So as we said earlier, the resistance of this resistor R is known as your external resistance, whereas the small resistance of the power supply is known as the internal resistance. One last term to look at is something called a short circuit. So it says that when a battery is short circuited, the load resistance is effectively zero, i.e. we can set the external resistance R equal to zero. And this means that the voltage V is equal to zero because the terminal potential difference V equals IR, remember, and it depends on this R, so V will also equal zero. And therefore, we can simplify our equation for EMF and internal resistance. We can simplify this to say that V here equals zero, so this means we're left with E equals I small r. So this gives us a sort of simplified equation for a short circuit. So if you're asked about a short circuit in a question, just know that you can set R and therefore V equal to zero and simplify it to E equals IR. A battery being short circuited can be dangerous though, as the current can become incredibly high with no load resistance. A battery connected to itself is an example of a short circuit which will cause the battery to heat up. And I'm sure some of you might have done this before in class, where you take one wire and you connect one terminal of the battery to the other terminal of the battery and that is called a short circuit. And the reason the battery is going to heat up is because the electrons can only supply their energy to the internal resistance inside the battery. There's nowhere else for the electron energy to go other than back into the battery. So it's going to heat up that little internal resistor inside the battery. And that's just an example of how you can form a short circuit. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video one of these, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.